thank you for joining us again uh, tonight. For the last few Wednesday nights, uh, we've been talking about faith, living by faith. And in keeping with that theme, I'd like to point your attention to an Old Testament prophet by the name of Habakkuk. Uh, his uh, book is very small, only three chapters. But in the book, he is asking God uh, some serious questions that are on his mind. Uh, his name has an interesting meaning, uh, literally, one who wrestles with God. And in essence, that's what he's doing in his book. He's uh, wrestling with God about some questions that are on his mind. Uh, his first question is an age-old question. I'm sure he wasn't the first to ask it goes something like this. Why do the wicked prosper while the righteous suffer? Okay. Uh, and he asks it in uh, chapter 1, verse 13. Speaking to God, he says, your eyes are too pure to look on evil. He's commenting on the holiness of God. Uh, you cannot tolerate wrongdoing. It's almost like he's setting God up, okay? And now here's the question. Why then do you tolerate the treacherous, he's talking about treacherous people. Okay? Why are you silent when the wicked swallow up those more righteous than themselves? Okay? Now let me put this question in historical perspective. Uh, Habakkuk ministered around 612 to 605 BC. Okay? And a few years earlier, in 721, uh, the Assyrians were the world uh, power at that time. And they invaded the northern kingdom of, of Israel, you know, those 10 tribes, the northern kingdom of Israel, and uh, destroyed them. Well, now the Assyrians had been defeated themselves by the Babylonians. And so Habakkuk uh, just has a feeling that the Babylonians will someday invade the southern kingdom like Assyria invaded and destroyed the northern kingdom. So when he's talking about the treacherous people, he's talking about the Babylonians, okay? Now, God's answer is found in chapter 2, uh, beginning at verse 2. It says, Then the Lord replied, Write down the revelation, his answer to his question, Write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets, so that anyone who hears may run with it or share it, okay? Pass it on. Next verse. For the revelation, again, his answer, for the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay, at least from God's perspective, okay? See, the enemy is puffed up. God's talking about the Babylonians. See, the enemy is puffed up. His desires are not upright, but the righteous person will live by his faithfulness or his faith. Does that phrase sound familiar? The righteous will live by his faith. The Apostle Paul was so moved by this verse in the tiny book of Habakkuk uh, that he quoted it uh, to his letter uh, or in his letter to the Romans, all right? And so in Romans chapter 1, verse 17, the Apostle Paul talks about uh, the righteousness of God and how one acquires God's righteousness. He says, for in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written. Here's this quote from Habakkuk 2.4. The righteous will live by faith. That fit Paul's theology because Paul knew that salvation is by faith. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works lest any person boast. Now, Paul wasn't the only one who was moved by Habakkuk's uh, uh, line that the just will live by his faith. 
Another man, hundreds of years after the time of the Apostle Paul, uh, was also uh, destined to be changed because of running across Paul's quote of Habakkuk 2 4. His name was Martin Luther. Martin Luther died in 1546. Now that's AD or after Christ, 1546. But during his lifetime, he became known as the father or the founder of the Protestant Reformation. Now, the Protestant Reformation spawned several different Protestant denominations, and Baptists were one of those. So we trace our Christian heritage uh, back to Martin Luther, and then, of course, back to Scripture uh, itself. But Martin Luther was a priest and a monk who all of his life had been taught that if you want to have a relationship with God, if you want to be saved, in essence, um, you have to perform good works. And uh, if anyone performed good works, historians tell us, it was Martin Luther. But he was constantly dissatisfied with the works that he was doing because he felt no closer to God. And when he read Paul's statement, the just or the righteous will live by faith, it clicked. It was like a thunderbolt. He finally realized that a, rela a relationship with God is not possible by doing good works, but by faith, faith in Christ alone. We say faith alone in Christ alone. And so that was a dramatic change that took place in Martin Luther's life. So what I would like to do is to uh, use Habakkuk uh, as, a, as a, a backboard and uh, discuss the question, what does it mean to live by faith? And how does he answer that question? All right. In essence, uh, we see uh, three things that Habakkuk says it means to live by faith. First, to live by faith means to wait, to wait. Now, Habakkuk uh, had been a man who had waited a long time uh, to hear God answer uh, his question. In fact, as he opens uh, his book, uh, he tells us that he had already been waiting. In Habakkuk uh, chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, it says, The prophecy of Habakkuk the prophet. How long, Lord, must I call for help? But you do not listen or cry out to you, violence, but you do not save. Well, I don't know how long he'd been uh, waiting for God to answer. I don't know how long he'd been praying for, for God to respond. We, we just don't have that information. Could have been a long time. But in chapter 2, we see Habakkuk is still waiting. He says in chapter 2, verse 1, I stand at my watch and station myself on the city walls. I will look to see what God will say to me and what answer I am to give to this complaint. Why do the wicked prosper and the righteous suffer? So he's waiting. Have you ever waited for God to answer a prayer? Well, of course you have. Have you ever waited for God to answer a particular question? Probably so. Probably so. We're waiting right now, aren't we? In the midst of this uh, worldwide pandemic, uh, we're waiting uh, for it to be over, for sure. And we're waiting for uh, the world to open back up. Uh, many people have been furloughed or, or laid off, and, and uh, maybe they haven't even gotten that stimulus check yet. And uh, it might not even be enough when it comes. And so we're waiting. We're waiting for the virus to work its way through and to uh, move on and get out of here. And so all of us know uh, what it is to wait, uh, particularly uh, in these last few weeks. Well, I want you to realize that God seldom answers either a question or a prayer when we want him to or the way that we want him to. Now, that doesn't mean that God doesn't have an answer. And it doesn't mean that God won't answer. It just means that 
his answer comes a little differently than we expect. Now, I think that this is what um, verse 3 is trying to tell us that I read a moment ago. Let's look at it again. Chapter 2, verse 3. God replying to uh, Habakkuk's question, for the revelation awaits an appointed time. Revelation meaning answer. Uh, revelation is to reveal. Okay. Uh, the revelation of God is awaiting what? An appointed time. Now, this reminds us that God's time is different than our time. I don't like it. You don't like it. But that's the way it is. He's telling Habakkuk, Habakkuk, I'm going to answer your question, but it's going to be on my time schedule, not on yours. It's awaiting an appointed time. So that's the first thing that verse 3 is telling us. A second thing that I see in verse 3 is that God's purpose is different than ours. Not only is his time different, but his purpose is different. The very next phrase says, it speaks of the end. What speaks? The revelation. The revelation speaks of the end. In other words, God is taking a long look. He is looking uh, long term uh, at an answer and a solution uh, for Habakkuk's question. Well, you and I, uh, we don't we don't look uh, at the at the long term. We're all caught up in the short term. We're all caught up in what's going on now, and we want an answer now, and we want him to answer the way we want him to answer. But God says, now wait a minute, I'm looking at the long term. I'm not just looking for a short term solution. I'm looking for a long term solution. And then He says, though it linger. It's not coming on our timetable. Though it linger, wait for it. Wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. That's hard to do, isn't it? To wait. That's probably uh, one of our uh, weakest uh, points is, is to wait, to wait for anything. All right. The psalmist says in Psalms 27, 14, wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Now, why did he say wait twice? <laughs> because he knows we need it. He knows it's hard for us to do. Uh, and yet, to live by faith means to wait on God. All right? To realize that his timing is different than ours, that his purpose is more long-term than our short-term interests doesn't mean he won't answer. It just means his answer is going to be a little different than what we're anticipating. And what do we do in the meantime? One of the hardest things it is for us to do, to wait. But that's what it means to live by faith, to wait on God. I see a, thick, a, I see a second thing, I should say, about what it means to live by faith. And that, mean, that, that is, it means to obey. It means to obey. I saw that in verse 2. Now, we read verse 2 a moment ago, but let me go back and, and comment on it, okay? It says, The Lord replied to Habakkuk, Write down the revelation. In other words, when the revelation comes, when I give you this answer, write it down. Now, what's he supposed to do with it? He says, Write down the revelation and make it plain or clear on tablets. A tablet would be something enduring, uh, much less uh, susceptible to uh, being uh, torn or uh, damaged in any way, like, like paper might be. So make it plain on tablets so that a herald or anyone who hears it may run with it, meaning can share it with others. And then God talks about this revelation coming on his time and according to his purpose. Now, why did God tell Habakkuk to do something before the answer came. I think he was telling Habakkuk, I want to see how serious you are. I want to see what you're willing to do. And I'm going to give you an assignment. And if you obey that assignment, then the revelation is going to come. Then the answer is going to come. You will hear from me. Now, this might be a lesson for us. Is it possible that the answer to our prayer or the answer to our present 
coronavirus need waits on God to see what you and I will do if we will be obedient to him. Now, here's what I mean by that. I've heard many people say that uh, during this time of uh, COVID-19, um, that people are going to come back to God, that people are going to uh, recognize their, their need for God. And um, if, if they once if they once had a connection with God, they're they're going to they're going to make that connection all over again. Or if they never knew God, they're they're going they're they're going to uh, uh, get to know God and have a relationship with Him. I hope that truly happens. But let me say something. Historically, it's not something that is always uh, 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 a reality. Okay. Now here's the example: nine eleven. When 9-11 happened, I was a pastor in Lubbock, Texas. On that very day, we had people show up to our church by the dozens. And what they wanted was for us to open our sanctuary and let them go in and pray, and they did. And for the next several Sundays, churches weren't closed. Um, for, the, for the next several Sundays, our auditorium was packed. Uh, we had a sanctuary that would seat 700 people. We were packed for several Sundays. But you know what happened? After the sense of urgency was gone, after a sense of normalcy came, people stopped coming to church. Not the ones who came to church before. I'm talking about the new people. It just didn't last. It just didn't last. I hope it's different this time. I hope it does last. But could God be looking to us to see what our response is going to be uh, to this uh, coronavirus? Uh, is he uh, perhaps waiting to see if we're going to acknowledge our need for him and if we're gonna follow through? If it's going to be different this time, he waited to see what Habakkuk's answer was going to be to his assignment. Are you going to do what I want you to do? Could God also be waiting to see our reaction, our response, how serious we are about obeying God and following God and serving God and worshiping God? What does it mean to live by faith? It means to wait on God. And it also means to obey God. I see a third thing in this story. Living by faith also means trusting God. Let me fast forward to the end of the story. God answered Habakkuk's prayer. The Babylonians were defeated by the Persians. It actually was a a combination of the Persians and the Medes. They came together and joined forces and uh, defeated the Babylonians in 539. Oop, my phone. I should have turned it off. 539. And uh, this was 70 years. I better go ahead and do that or it's going gonna, it's gonna to say something again. And then 70 years elapsed before God answered Habakkuk's question. We don't even know if Habakkuk was still alive. Probably wasn't. We have no idea how long he lived. Well, now here's the question. Did he die an old, bitter, frustrated man who had pleaded with God all of his life, who had prayed prayer after prayer that was never answered, is that what we expect from Habakkuk? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think Habakkuk continued to live by faith. I think Habakkuk continued to trust God, even though he didn't see the answer to his prayer. Now, let me ask you a question. Why do you serve God? Do you serve God for what you can get out of him? Do you serve God just when things are going good? 
Do you serve God when uh, your prayers are all answered and when you're happy and uh, you're not facing any difficulty, any trials? Well, is that really faith? I don't think so. I think faith serves God, pleases God, waits on God, obeys God, trusts God, even when you don't receive the answer to your prayer. I think that's what Habakkuk did. Well, you know, um, verse 4, I thought I had that thing turned off. Verse 4 tells us that um, Habakkuk received God's message that the just shall live by faith. He waited. We're waiting. We're waiting, okay? In the meantime, what should we be doing? Well, we ought to realize that God's time is different than ours. We ought to realize that uh, God's purpose is different than ours. And we need to do what Habakkuk did. Wait, obey, and trust God anyway. Do you know why we should live a life of faith? It's the only way to please God. Hebrews 11.6 Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Let's pray. Father, it's hard to live by faith. It's not easy. It's hard to keep on keeping on when our prayers aren't answered and our questions uh, go unanswered. But Father, I pray that you will help us to realize that you have indeed called us to live by faith. The just shall live by faith. And that's not always easy to do. In fact, it probably is seldom easy to do. But help us to follow Habakkuk's example and to wait and to obey and to trust God anyway. In your name we pray. Amen. Now I want to encourage you to go to our website, fbcnoble.org. A lot of information on there about our services. We do this service on Sunday morning at 11, and also a lot of resources that are available. Instructions on, on, on online giving uh, are there as well. You folks have been doing great, and I just want to uh, brag on you a little bit. You've been very, very faithful in your tithes and your offerings, and uh, I thank God for that. God bless you. Good night.